What's up? I'm Triple Shoot. In this super quick guide, I'm going to show you how to get the best FPS from the Outer Worlds 2. Just keep in mind, this video is only going to touch on the in-game graphics options. If you like even more performance, you'll find related guides down below. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. To start things off, the tutorial runs through smoothly, but as soon as you hit the first planet, which I've traveled back to here in an earlier save, FPS starts getting pretty dicey, especially if you're on a default settings. Right now, I'm setting at a solid 31 FPS, frame times all over the place, and if I pause settings, graphics at the very top, let's quickly run through a couple of these things, including what you should change pretty much immediately. Starting off, windowed mode should definitely be set to full screen for the best experience, but windowed full screen works fine. Your resolution should match your display. Frame rate limit you should set to uncapped unless you're recording, streaming, or trying to watch YouTube and things like that in the background and other processes are suffering, lagging, etc. In which case, cap your FPS to slightly below what you're actually getting to leave some extra headroom for other programs. That being said, you can get a much finer control using something like the NVIDIA control panel or River Tuner to cap your FPS. Vertical sync should definitely be turned off always. We'll return to upscaling in just a second. Right below this, latency reduction method. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you're able to select NVIDIA Reflex low latency, and I'd recommend that. I'm not too sure if there's an AMD equivalent, but if there is, turning it on should be pretty good. Then if you turn on NVIDIA Reflex low latency, you'll get another option right below it where we can choose between on and on plus boost. If you have a really low powered CPU, choose on plus boost, otherwise leave this on on. Then right below this motion blur, I've turned off completely and we'll start off by making sure that hardware ray tracing is turned off as well. Scrolling down further, this game has basically defaulted me to very high, but if we just apply these changes and see what's happening in a game, right now I'm sitting in this current scene at a solid 30 FPS. That's not great. I am recording, so my FPS is slightly lower than while I was benchmarking and testing, but the first thing we'll check out, which will obviously give you a huge boost in performance, is the upscaling type. You can choose between none, which is just your native resolution, TAA, TSR, AMD Fidelity FX4, Intel XESS, and NVIDIA DLSS. Obviously, if you're running an NVIDIA GPU, basically always choose NVIDIA DLSS. Otherwise, AMD FSR 4 is a pretty good option here. Then for the super resolution quality, basically choose quality for any option here, unless you really need extra performance at the end of this guide. While you can turn it off, native res should usually tank your FPS. Right now I'm sitting at around 23, which is terrible. Not to mention, there's tons of aliasing, the world doesn't look that good, and OBS is probably suffering as well. TSR is usually quite blurry, but it is the default in this game. For some reason, there's some weird shimmering, and I'm at around 28 FPS. TAA should give you slightly better performance than TSR, but it doesn't look any better. AMD FSR 4 should give you a slight performance boost compared to TSR, and the game should look so much better, especially on quality. XESS isn't bad either, but if you're on an NVIDIA system, DLSS basically trumps everything. The shimmering's completely gone, the game looks so much better this way. Performance-wise, I'm still at around 30, but it looks so much better than native at 20, or the game's default of TSR at around 26 FPS. Once you've chosen FSR 4, XESS, or DLSS on quality, proceed all the way down to hardware ray tracing and make sure this is turned off basically all the time. While I'm still on very high settings, which is what I defaulted to, I'm sitting at a solid 29-30 FPS. If you have an RTX GPU, turning it on, you should see a big increase in shadow quality and things like that, but you'll also see a relatively big hit to your FPS. On my 3080 Ti, it's not crazy in most scenes, but in other ones, it can be quite a bit more demanding than having this turned off. During benchmarking, on low settings, I moved from 61 to 58 FPS, and on very high settings, I moved from 38 to 34. Obviously, on more recent RTX GPUs and things like that, performance should be slightly better in terms of the performance hit, but most of the time, off is better. If you absolutely hate the shimmery shadow effects that you can see quite often while you're exploring, especially indoors through those vents and things like that, having this turned on is going to help greatly reduce that, but of course, at a small FPS cost. Anyways, scrolling down after we turned off hardware ray tracing to the graphics options down here, we've got everything from low, medium, high to very high. And of course, you can customize it as you see fit. To quickly run through these options at very high, using a DLSS quality 2K 3080 Ti, I'm getting 30 FPS. Moving down to high around 36.7, which is definitely an improvement. Then medium 44, 45, 
and finally low around 50. During benchmarking and testing while I'm not recording, I stood at around 70 FPS, so just keep that in mind. Performance is not great, and we'll try and fix that at the very end with a couple of tweaks. Let's start off at the very top by setting our graphics quality down to low. There's a couple of freebies that you can raise here for basically no FPS impact. Depending on how much VRAM your system has, you should be able to raise textures basically all the way up. On my 12 gig graphics card, I moved from around 7.8 gigs of VRAM used to 8.6. So as long as you're basically exceeding the minimum requirements, you should be able to crank up your textures to high or very high. Each step took me up about 200 megs of VRAM used. So if you're really struggling, you'll basically need to leave this down. The difference between low and very high textures isn't immediately obvious, but it should make the game look quite a bit better with basically no FPS impact, as long as you're not running out of VRAM. Then other options that basically had no FPS impact include anti-aliasing. Obviously, if you're using upscaling, be it DLSS, FSR, XCSS, it should basically take care of that and they shouldn't be used at all. However, even on TAA and TSR, I did see a difference here when I was playing around with this, so I'm not too sure if it's broken or just an incredibly cheap effect. I'll just leave this on low anyways, as it shouldn't have an impact while you're using an upscaler. Then at the very bottom at crowd density, it should have more of a CPU impact. However, of course, you'll only really notice this in certain situations. And in the majority of this game, you're not really going to see a difference in crowds anyways. You can leave it on very high. And as soon as you enter a crowded area, if your PC tanks, try lowering this. But for the most part, leaving it higher is fine. Everything else here does have an FPS impact. If you're running a super low end system, this or maybe that is probably the best that you're going to get out of your graphics options. But assuming you're running a higher end system, you can start from high or very high and work your way down to gain a massive amount of FPS, basically equaling that of low. So on very high, I'm at 32 FPS now. The biggest performance impact I saw was global illumination. From very high to high, gaining about 3 FPS, so 10%, to medium, you should see a small increase here. And low seems to be about the same as a medium for me. For the most part, I wouldn't recommend raising your global illumination above medium. Then shadows is also the next heavy hitter. On very high, I'm sitting at 34 FPS versus a huge jump to 41, 42. Medium around the same and low around the same as well. For the most part, basically never have your shadows set to very high. High is the highest you should go here. Then view distance obviously will load more objects further away. The less this option is, the more VRAM you'll be saving and the higher FPS you should be getting usually. During benchmarking, I moved from 65 to 4 to 3 to 62 between very high and low. So each step obviously loaded more things and cost me slightly more FPS. I'd usually play it around medium. Pop in shouldn't be too noticeable. Now with just these a very few small changes from very high, I've moved up from unplayable to totally playable with just a few changes. From there, if you want to lower your reflections down to medium, you should see a small performance increase with basically no reflection quality change. Mirrors don't seem to work on any quality setting that is. Down to low, you'll notice that screen space reflections stop working at least as well, and you should see a small FPS increase there, at least in most areas. Even areas without reflections, I did see a small FPS impact by setting it all the way down to low. Then finally, visual effects. While it doesn't sound like it has a huge impact, high and very high are basically the same performance-wise, however setting it to medium and then low saved me about 2 FPS each while benchmarking. So from 60 to 62 and 64. For that reason, for the most part, I'll be leaving it on low. Finally, screen effects on very high. I do see an FPS impact. Moving from very high to just high, I gain about 5 to 10% of my FPS, moving from 40 to 44. And then moving down from high to low, there's basically no difference. Again, this is another option I'd avoid leaving on very high. If you're playing on a pretty good system, this is a great choice. While you may think foliage has a big impact on FPS, let's look over there. Very high, 45 versus low, we're still exactly where we were previously. So again, there you go. If I were to play while recording, 45 would be far too slow. The input latency is definitely noticeable. I think I'd probably be playing with textures maxed out, crowd density, maybe medium or high to get populated areas feeling more full, reflections that I have on medium, just so we have some sort of reflection in water and things like that. Foliage didn't have an FPS impact, but I'll leave it on lower medium. Visual effects, very small, mediums probably fine here. And view distance is just to help prevent pop in. Medium is probably what I'd leave that on. With this low end optimization, all of the small FPS impacts that each setting has added up brings me up to around 48 FPS from 44, which was 
my optimized high setting. So yeah, we didn't gain a huge amount here. When I flick it down to low, I only gain around two FPS from 48 to 50. So I'd take the quality increase at a very small cost. At the very bottom, you can change your field of view. It will affect your FPS. However, of course, play on whatever makes you feel comfortable. And that's basically all that we can do here. While barely scraping 50 while recording is obviously not great, input latency doesn't feel great either. If you're already getting well above 60 FPS, you can try enabling a frame generation on supported graphics cards. I don't have that option here. However, frame generation is in the game, as far as I understand, and you can try turning it on for a huge boost in FPS. But again, you will increase your input latency. While it may not reflect it in frame times, you'll definitely feel the difference. Now, basically having squeezed everything out of the game that we can up until this point, Obviously, as this is an Unreal Engine game, we can go into the config files and tweak things using, of course, the usual copy-paste config INI file mods. How much FPS can you squeeze out of the game with those? To start off, there's a couple of different places you can get mods from. I'm just using Nexus mods here as it's usually the go-to place. You will need an account to download files though. And of course, scrolling down, you'll likely see a lot of graphics tweaks, things like that. And there's many, many different options. If we sort by popular here, you'll see the most popular one, optimized tweaks. Let's go for it and download that. Once you find a mod that you like, it's usually just INI files that you'll be downloading. Head across to the files tab right over here, and then scroll down and choose one of these options. Usually there's a base pack that gives you a small boost in FPS, then a bigger one, and sometimes an even bigger one. I'll download the base boost and boost two here just to see the performance differences. This pack obviously advertises a huge boost in performance, so we'll put that to the test. Now, while this mod in particular uses pack files for these configurations, other mods like this one here, use engine.ini files and if you choose to use these you'll be putting them in a slightly different place i'll show you where to place both of these to start off for the engine.ini files all you need to do is hold start or the windows key and press r to bring up this run dialog inside of here type percentage local app data percentage backslash and then type in ARK. We'll be selecting Arkansas and click OK. This will open a file browser straight into your save game folder. We can open up save here, config and Windows. You might say a different name here for the Xbox app version, things like that. I have it on Steam, so it's just Windows for me. And inside of here, you can place your engine.ini files and the like. Now, oftentimes you'll need to set this file to read only as the game can delete this file when it starts up, or at least usually does. If you have an engine INI file, drop it into this folder here, right click, choose properties, and make sure that the read only option is checked. You can just open this text file in any text editor like Notepad, and you'll see all the different changes that the creator has made. You're able to change these and save the file as long as you have read only unchecked. Just make sure it's checked when you actually boot the game, just so this file stays where it is. As for pack file mods, just to be clear, I wouldn't recommend using multiple FPS boost mods as they'll probably fight with each other. I'll delete this engine INI file for now. And to install pack file mods, you'll need to head across to where your game is installed, Arkansas content packs, and make a new folder called tilde mods. I'd recommend copying this probably from the description down below, just in case you don't know where the key is. This may not be as easy on platforms like the Xbox Game Pass. However, on Steam, you can just right click the game, manage and choose browse local files to head across to where the game is installed. Then open up the Arkansas folder, followed by content, and then Packs and inside of here, Control Shift N to make a new folder and enter tilde mods as such. Hit enter and inside of here, we can drop the pack files. Let's test these out. I'll start off with the base pack file. If you use a simple program to extract this pack file, for example, you'll usually see engine, config, windows, bam, there's the engine INI file, which we placed in our local app data. And in this case, they also went to Arkansas and made a message here. In case you were curious what's usually inside of these. Anyways, I've placed the base file in here. Let's fire up the game and see the FPS difference. So there we go, returning to the game and standing basically where we were before with the same optimized low settings. I'm now sitting at a solid 50 FPS, which is a substantial increase from, I think it was 45, not huge though. Now using the boost pack in the same exact place, 
and now it's setting a solid 57 FPS, which is a much bigger increase in performance. The water looks a bit different. Obviously, there's no reflections anymore. I think it's moving a bit differently too. I don't know, maybe that's just how it looks. But yeah, that's a substantial increase, and this at 60 FPS is more than playable. While not recording, I should be getting a much higher number. Finally, let's try Boost 2. And there we go, we've launched in with this too, and now we're setting a solid 60 FPS, so not a huge increase over the original Boost. There's a couple of things that have been loaded. I see there's less fog. I think things might be a slightly lower quality, but yeah. Overall, I think I prefer the boost pack and FPS should be much higher while playing without recording, of course. For the most part, this is a massive increase in performance across the board, but even moving back to very high, I'm sitting at a solid 56 FPS, though of course I don't think this is true very high, as this is likely overriding a lot of the settings that I'm changing manually in the in-game options. Besides having less fog, which I think is a big visual improvement, at least to a certain point, FPS is so much better. But yeah, that's basically that. So, hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. My has been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.